Check out FlipsideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10 and support the channel at the same time. Hey, this is John from Heroes and the Legends, and welcome to this special edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch, where we're going to look at all things Rivals of Ixalan. We are beginning the second week now of the set being out. It came out a week ago today at time of recording. And over the course of the week, a lot of packs have been cracked, and also we saw the first weekend of competitive play. So as you can imagine, those two things have impacted the price of a lot of the singles, and we're going to be looking at the cards that are going down in value as well as the cards that are going up in value. Quickly, before we get started, just a real fast reminder, if you're looking for a way to support what we do here at the channel, it's always appreciated. You'll find some ways in the description below. Our Patreon page is linked there. Also, you'll find a link to products on Amazon. Once you go through that link, anything you purchase on Amazon at that point will get a small percentage. And then finally, Flipside Gaming is still offering a promo code. You can pick up Rivals there or many other things. And if you use that promo code, you'll save some cash and also help the channel. So with that being said, let's get into it. Beginning with the top 10 cards that have lost value this week from Rivals of Excellent. Coming in at number 10, Tender Shoe Dryad, down 66 cents to $1.58. I'll tell you, this card did wreck me in draft, though. I was 2-0 going into the third round, and I didn't draw particularly well, but I lost both games to this thing, because if it hits the battlefield and you can't find your removal spells, and I had quite a bit of removal, but just couldn't hit it, you, you just lose. I mean, this thing can't stay out there for more than just a couple turns, and it's just basically over at that point most of the time, I think. So, very powerful and limited, I will tell you that firsthand. Now, what about standard, though? It didn't really do anything week one, and I do think the 2-2 power toughness is just a little too fragile right now for the environment. And the bottom line is you have a lot of, like, Mono Red or Rakdos or Boros aggro decks out there that are going to be able to get rid of this thing probably pretty easily, or they may just kind of beat you down before you even get it on the battlefield. So I don't really think this particular meta is going to suit this card really well with the five casting costs. And it looks like at least a lot of people right now are agreeing with me as this takes a pretty big hit. Number nine is Vraska Scorn. This is down 67 cents to 59 cents. I do want to point out that this is not part of the regular Rivals of Ixalan set, but this card is actually one of the Planeswalker deck cards for the Vraska Planeswalker deck. And, you know, if you want to pick up a card like this for casual play and you're, say, already playing with Vraska Scheming Gorgon, then maybe you pick that up as a single and you didn't just go ahead and buy the deck to begin with, then... Yeah, I think this is a fine pickup for either Commander or just any sort of casual deck. This isn't something you'll see, of course, in Standard, but yeah, it's gone down quite a bit this week. Number 8, Journey to Eternity, down 67 cents as well to 372. Now, this card's actually really sweet. I think this card's awesome and does have a lot of potential for the future. I'm just afraid that the current situation in Standard isn't going to really play to this card. I don't think there's enough pieces there for this whole kind of reanimation Graveyard Matters thing to take hold in Standard, but I do think the light Graveyard Matters that we saw in this particular set may be a throw forward to some things we're going to get in the future. Maybe Dominaria, perhaps. Maybe Flashback will come back, or perhaps it'll just be more of a reanimation sub-theme or something like that in one of the colors. So if that's the case, this card does have potential in the future. I don't really see it doing much in this Standard meta, though, at least at this point. Number seven, Warkite Marauder. This goes down 83 cents to 308. It did not see a ton of play the first weekend, but it did see play in a favorable wins deck that actually looked pretty cool. So that deck actually had a decent result in the classic, but big question is, will that deck be able to kind of hold on in this meta? And maybe will there be more copies being played next week and the week after? So this is one to watch. It is a rare. So remember, a lot of packs are being opened this week. Mythics have a better chance of holding their value because there's just less of them out there. Rare is there's a substantial amount of those things that will hit the marketplace over the course of the first few weeks as packs just get cracked like mad. So it's really, really hard just generally because of the amounts out there for these rares to maintain value unless they're really heavily played. And if this is played, it's only going to be played in that one deck probably. It is a really cool card though, and if it wasn't for this card, I don't think that deck actually makes it at all. So we'll have to kind of watch what this one does over the next few weeks. Number six, Direfleet Daredevil, down 98 cents to $5. This one surprised me a little bit, quite honestly, because it did see a lot of play that first weekend. So this seems like a pretty big drop. Now, it did have a pretty high price point coming out of the pre-release time, and it is a rare, it's not a mythic, meaning there's a lot more copies out there in the marketplace, especially as packs get cracked in high quantities, like we've been seeing over the last week and we'll continue to see over the next few weeks. 
So that does come into play, but this card was in decks like the Mono Red Aggro deck, the Boros Aggro deck, the Rakdos Aggro deck, the Rakdos Midrange deck. I even saw this in like Gruel Monster builds. Now, it wasn't like always a four of slam dunk. Sometimes it was a one, two of, sometimes it's coming out of the board. So quantities of the card weren't necessarily always high in these decks, but it was showing up in so many builds. This is one to watch. I wouldn't be surprised if this stabilizes quickly. Number five, Kumina, Tyrant of Araska, down to $1.03 to twenty one ninety four. So this is down a little bit this week. Not really surprising considering the high price point it had coming out of the release time period. The card's super sweet, and yes, it did see play in Merfolk decks over the first weekend, and that will continue, I'm sure. The big question is twofold for me, though. The first part is, can the Merfolk decks hang on? There's a lot of great decks out there in the meta, some very aggressive ones, as we saw the first weekend. Can Merfolk decks hang in this meta? I hope so, because I think it's a pretty sweet deck. We'll have to kind of wait and see what happens over the next couple weeks with that. There was a copy that came in ninth place in the Star City Games Dallas Team Constructed event, which did consist of three different decks, a Standard, Legacy, and Modern, and that was their Standard deck. So it could have been carried a little bit by the other two decks, perhaps. We'll have to kind of wait and see. That was the best finish that Merfolk had last weekend. So we'll kind of continue to monitor this one. Now, I'll also say this about Kamina. Don't feel like this is going to be the next Scarab God, even if that deck does well, because the reason Scarab God has been able to maintain $30-ish has been the fact that that's in so many decks. Like, it's all over the place. If this is successful, it's only going to be in one deck, even if it's a four of, like we saw last weekend, which I don't even know if a lot of decks will continue to run four of these. I guess we'll wait and see. Even if it is a four of, I'm expecting this to be more of like a $14 card, probably. And that's, again, assuming that that deck does well. Number four, Zora's Gateway, down to $1.13 to $5.99. This is a pretty cool commander card, but I actually did see it getting some play the first weekend of Standard. It was in some of the black-red mid-range decks. Not all the copies of the decks out there, but I did see some running one or two of these, sometimes out of the board, sometimes in the main, actually. So it'll be interesting to see if more people pick up on that for that deck in the coming weeks, or if it starts to disappear. I also saw one of this card in a vintage shops deck on Magic Online, believe it or not. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I wonder how it worked out for that person. Number three, Ezor the Lawbringer, down to $1.17 to $4.50. Another cool commander card, but nothing that we saw put up any results this weekend. Number two, Blood Sun, down to $1.44 to $6.68. Now, this is going down pretty sharply for a couple of reasons. One, I wouldn't expect this card to see extensive play like week one, right? This is the type of card that takes you a few weeks to kind of wrap your head around. You want to test with it a little bit, see where it's good, where it's not going to be good. And I think for the most part, maybe this is a standard sideboard card, assuming that some of these non-basic lands eventually do well in the format. And we'll have to kind of wait and see how this particular meta actually shapes out. But I will say this about the card. It is a rare, so I mean, a lot are being open. That's another reason for the dip. But I saw fourth place in the Star City Games Dallas Open again, that team constructed event. The legacy deck the fourth place team was running was a mono red sneak deck running three of these in the main. Kind of cool, huh? They were still running four Blood Moons, but three of these as well, which I thought was pretty sweet. So we'll have to kind of see if more people pick up on that idea in the coming weeks. Number one, Awatli Radiant Champion, down $1.50 this week to seven oh two. Probably no surprise that this continues to lose value quickly. It's just not a good standard card, and it's one of those things that it can't protect itself, and for it to really do anything, you have to have a fair amount of creatures on the battlefield for it to be worth the four mana. Now, if you do, wonderful, but yeah, probably we're already winning that game, honestly. And there's other things you could be doing for four mana that are good not only if you are winning to help you slam the door, but also in a case where you need to be more defensive or try to catch up. With that being said, I think this is still a really good commander card, though, for Selesnia token decks. I think it could be really sweet there. All right, let's move on to the cards that have gained value this week. And I said at the top of the show that a lot of packs are being opened this week. That's very normal. So what you're going to see here are very small, very conservative gains for the most part. And I'll be honest with you, I could only find 10 cards that were actually gaining value. That's not unusual, though. Again, the cards that are gaining value for the most part are the ones that performed well last weekend. But when a lot of packs are being opened, just generally, all the values are going to go down. And that's what you're seeing here. So let's start off with number 10. Brazen Freebooter, up a cent to 15 cents. This could have been pretty much any card, just happened to be this one. Not a whole lot to say about it. Number nine is Swamp, of four cents to 75 cents. 
So a couple things to say about this. First off, again, it's just another indication that there's not a lot of cards going up in value. But secondly, these basic lands are really nice looking basic lands. And a lot of players are starting to notice that and trying to pick these up. And because this is a small set, it's a little bit harder to grab hold of the lands because you play this in conjunction with Ixalan. And ultimately, not as much of this will be open as Ixalan because this is a small set and it won't be out for like the longer window of time compared to Ixalan before like Dominaria comes out. And of course, Masters 25 is coming out too. It's kind of funny to me, though, that people are picking up on how nice these lands look at this point right after we went through the whole unstable land thing. So maybe people are more in tune to the basic lands, but they are a really sweet cycle and they are actually going up in value. This isn't the only one you'll see on the list. Number eight is Twilight Profit. It's up 14 cents to nine dollars. Now, we didn't see huge results from this week one, but since then, I have seen some vampire decks making the rounds in small tournaments Magic Online. So the Vampire deck definitely running this and ticks up a little bit this week because I think people are maybe thinking about brewing that deck or trying it out or trying to tweak it. Could be a deck we see in the coming weeks. Also, too, don't underestimate the power of Commander decks. Vampire Commander decks are very popular, and this is awesome in those decks. Number seven, it's Planes, up 18 cents to 66 cents. And like I said, really beautiful cycle here. Number six is Mountain, up 23 cents to 71 cents. Number five is Island, up 29 cents to 81 cents. Number four, Alenda, the Dusk Rose, up 32 cents to $5.12. I'll be honest, the vampire builds I saw over the course of this week weren't running this card, so I don't really know if this is going to become a thing, even if the vampire decks do get there. We'll have to just kind of see how they get brewed out and what happens with the meta, but I do think, again, this is a really interesting commander card for those commander vampire decks, though. Number three is a comma. Primal Calamity of 53 cents to 750. I love the word calamity. It's a fun word to say, calamity. Anyway, <laughs> um, again, this isn't a card that we saw in competitive formats this past weekend. There was a Teamer dinosaur deck that looked really nice, though. Yeah, Teamer, <laughs> believe it or not. Not Naya, not Girl, but the dinosaur deck that put up the best performance was Teamer. Although dinosaurs did see play in other decks like Monsters decks and such. This particular one. No such luck for it there, but again, it's going up a little bit because it's a really interesting commander card. Number two is Rekindling Phoenix, up 217 to 1713. Okay, here's another one of those big cards. Saw tons of play this weekend. Probably no surprise. I mean, the card looks super powerful, super sweet for this format when it was released initially in the pre release time. And yeah, the card was awesome. It was in all the aggro decks the Mono Red, the Boros, the Rakdos. Rakdos mid range was running this. Again, you saw this in some monster decks, the Gruel variants, as well as the Teamer variants. It was showing up all over the place, and it was looking awesome. Number one, Jade Light Ranger, up $2.41 to eleven seventy six. Another card that, during the pre-release time, was kind of an easy pick to be something that was going to be good. And this one's a rare, surprisingly, in a way that the rare came in number one and the mythic came in number two. They were both seeing a lot of play. But this one, seeing play in Merfolk decks, of course... But surprisingly, in a lot of other ones, showing up in Monsters decks, showing up in Salt High Energy decks, showing up in Constructor decks, this card had a great, great showing this week. It's just a powerful card. Even if it wasn't a Merfolk, this would be a powerful card. And we can see that as it's being used in many decks that don't care whether it's a Merfolk or not. All right, so those are the cards for today. And... Very exciting first week with this set. I'm really looking forward to week two. I feel like the weekend of competition this weekend is going to at least take the meta to the next step. And I'm hoping to see maybe more control decks out there, maybe a little less aggro as people start to wrap their head around more complicated strategies and such. So we'll have to kind of wait and see where things go with this one. But I'm really looking forward to the ride because I think that, at least from what I saw last week, that this could be a really fun standard environment. My fingers are crossed anyway, so... Hopefully it doesn't turn out that one or two decks just become the best and dominate again, but at least what we saw from week one. I mean, aggro was powerful, but that's not unexpected when it comes to a new set coming out, especially considering we had the bannings, which really shook everything up. A lot of times week one, week two, people play aggro until they can wrap their head around a lot of the other things that are happening in the format. So until next time, though, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe. Have a great day. 
Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible by the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.